Let's take a look at this lower of cost or market problem that deals with journal entries. It's problem exercise, or it's actually exercise 9-4. All right, I'll read it to you. Dover Company began operations in 2012 and determined its ending inventory at cost and at lower of cost or market at December 31st, 2012 and December 31st, 2013. And the information is presented. Okay, so we've got 346,000 of cost at the end of 2012 versus a lower of cost or market of 322,000. Then we have 410,000 of cost at the end of 2013 versus a lower of cost or market of 390,000. Okay, here's the instructions for part A. Prepare the journal entries at the end of 2012 and 2013 assuming that the inventory is recorded at lower of cost or market and a perpetual inventories, inventory system is used and there's no allowance method uh, being used. Okay, so let me illustrate what we would do. Uh, the first thing is I'm, I'm going to jot in these numbers so we can compute the change. Okay, so the lower of cost or market is actually lower by 24,000 in 2012 and by 20,000 at 2013. So without the allowance method, what we would do is we would debit cost of goods sold for 24,000, that's the difference, right? And credit inventory. And now we've recorded inventory at the lower of cost or market. That's for 2012. Then in 2013, we would record the extra $20,000 that it fell. Okay? Now let me slide a little bit. And uh, show you what happens if we use the allowance method. And that's essentially what B is asking. It's essentially the same question, only with the allowance method. So rather than booking an entry to cost of goods sold directly, we would debit an account called lost due to market decline of inventory by 24,000 and credit an allowance report, an allowance account. And let me show you the full dollar amount. Okay, oh, got something off the screen. Let me move that off the side for you. Um, that's how we would tackle part B for the first year. For the second year, we've got a recovery. Now, I've calculated the 4,000 here, and uh, the recovery is the $4,000. And what we would do for the entry is we would record the change in the allowance account. So we were at 24,000, now it has to be 20. Um, so we would then debit the allowance to bring the allowance account to its new balance, which is 20,000 and we would have a recovery in the account lost due to market decline of inventory. But this is not to say that we're going to get a different cost of goods sold because C says which of these two methods provides the higher net income. And the answer to C is they're exactly the same. Okay, um, And the reason why they're exactly the same is we're assuming a perpetual inventory as method is being used. Um, and in the second case, if we're using a perpetual inventory method, then what happens is we're actually writing that that 346,000 down to 322,000. So when we sell it in the next year, we record a higher a higher um, uh, gross profit on it because we've already reduced the inventory for it. Okay, so. Um, so the loss of the 24000 in the previous year is actually going to show up as a higher gross margin in the next year, right? Um, it, and in Part A, if we're not using the allowance method, we're still recording it at the cost, so we've got to re reflect that $20,000 loss every year. So the net effect of both of these, you know, flushes out in the wash. It's exactly the same amount because in one case, we're treating within the perpetual records 
um, the lower cost of market as the new cost and the other we're not so we've got to make the entry at the end of the year in other words we either adjust it in the perpetual records or we don't but the net impact in in each year whether we use the allowance or not is exactly the same